in accordance with General Assembly Resolution 71-287, I now give the floor to Ms. Mira Sorvino, Goodwill Ambassador for the Global Fight Against Human Trafficking. Good morning, President Lachik, Secretary General Guterres, Under Secretary General Fedotov, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, President Lachik, for inviting me. I've had the enormous honor to serve the United Nations since 2009 as UNODC's Goodwill Ambassador to Combat Human Trafficking. I've traveled the world with the UN Action and Awareness Blue Heart Campaign, interviewed scores of survivors who've broken my heart with the inhuman brutality they've endured, but inspired me with their heroism and insights, as well as innovative government actors, tirelessly altruistic NGO workers, and even a trafficker who spoke of his victims as if they were simply mercantile goods whose suffering, suffering meant nothing. I had the privilege of being witness to and minor participant in the drafting session of the Global Plan of Action. Some may remember my non-protocol but heartfelt outbursts that victims and survivors I had met urgently needed the help of the GPA and the Voluntary Trust Fund, that they could not wait another minute. I spoke at the first assessment of the GPA in 2013, and now here at the second, I am so heartened to see this resolution adopted. But I feel compelled to urge everyone in this room not to rest on that proclamation, but to actually turn words into meaningful, robust action, long overdue to those millions still waiting in torment. The declaration notes, the scale of global resourcing to fight trafficking in persons does not match the scale of the challenge. Our just released ILO and IOM report estimates in 2016, 40.3 million people were victims of modern slavery, women and girls accounting for 71% and one in four victims, children. The global response, the US government tip report indicates the 2016 worldwide convictions of human traffickers were fewer than 10,000. This colossal failure to rescue and protect the world's most vulnerable is absolutely untenable. In a time where it may seem out of fashion to side with the marginalized and the oppressed, you, the gathered guardians of the highest standards of moral governance, must not look away from the victims of human trafficking. That the fruit we enjoy on our table of plenty may be picked by slave hands or the young girls and boys we pass huddling on a shadowy side street may be sexually trafficked is something to which we must no longer turn a blind eye. What is the modern definition of humanity's purpose if not to strive harder to uplift all members of this global community to enjoy basic standards of human rights, freedom from exploitation, and the promise of the pursuit of education and possibility? All things which lead to a freer, more stable, prosperous, and peaceful world. All goals which member states champion. The current conditions of conflict and natural disaster are creating humanitarian crises and refugee, refugee migrations of a perhaps unprecedented scale of 60 million displaced persons and 20 million refugees. And human trafficking is their direct consequence, not just a side effect. I applaud the SG's long-standing support of migrants and refugees. We must all look for ways to create immediate countermeasures to this direct pipeline to victimhood for these vulnerable people and not just attempt to damage control after the fact. I applaud that the Declaration recognizes and promotes that the Global Plan of Action and the 2030 Agenda, including the three SDGs that pertain to combating human trafficking, are mutually reinforcing. I urge all member states, civil society, and the private sector to vigorously employ the excellent recommendations of the GPA. We have the means and the knowledge of best practices to fight and end human trafficking, but only if we deploy the moral urgency, enormous political will, and robust financial resources that this dire situation calls for. First, survivor leaders must be involved in all creation, in all creation of policy. 
There must be cooperation and shared information between governments, a firm commitment to root out corruption that hampers efforts to fight and sometimes foments trafficking, a trauma, gender, and child-sensitive approach to all law and order responses and victim services, utilizing the most advanced testimony-gathering technology so as not to re-traumatize, evidence-led investigations, including capacity for undercover authority, so witness testimony is not a case's only hope. Civil redress included, but not replacing, criminal proceedings for victims, the prosecution of trafficking prioritized by governments and tried by specialist prosecutors who seek punishments commensurate with other severe crimes, not only easily paid fines, expungement of crimes the victims were forced to commit while in bondage, crucial society-wide training in identifying human trafficking situations and victims, and preventative curriculum for middle and high school aged children, as well as awareness campaigns for migrants and refugees, programs targeting the demand side of sexual exploitation, partnerships with the private sector to root out slavery in corporate supply chains, in-depth internet investigations to stop child sex trafficking, actions to prevent debt bondage and penalize recruiters, the list goes on, and a parallel vigorous attack on the root causes of vulnerability such as gender inequality, cultural discrimination, poverty, access to clean water education, and economic opportunity must occur. If you will all look at your table, you will find a blue heart pin representing the sadness of the victims and the cold-heartedness of their traffickers. The blue UN color also demonstrates our commitment to combat this crime. We hope you'll wear the blue heart to raise awareness of human trafficking and galvanize your commitment to fight it. And please, donate generously to the UN Voluntary Trust Fund for Victims of Human Trafficking, a direct way for life-saving and changing services to be delivered to victims and survivors globally through extremely well-vetted on-the-ground NGOs. As an Italo-American, I am proud to announce that Italy is donating $1 million to this vital fund today. <laughs> Grazie mille. But I've recently learned that I have DNA from many other regions, including Scandinavia, Great Britain, Germany, Spain, Eastern Europe, North Africa, the Middle East, and even Sub-Saharan Africa. I'm a true melting pot. And I was an East Asian major in college, so I will happily and claim and applaud all member states that match or add to this gift. Seriously, we are all one community, and it is high time for us to do all we can to protect and uplift the most vulnerable among us. Thank you.